Hi, you guys. Thanks so much, and welcome back. Always great to connect with you. Uh, back out here today, we're going to start as we normally do um, at the water's edge. And I'm going to ask you to uh, close your eyes. We got a lot going on in our lives, some of it fantastic, some of it challenging. Go ahead, close your eyes and just make a wish for yourself. This is wish time. All right, I made my wish, guys. Let's start our walk. Let's start our walk. Hope, hope you're doing awesome this week. Uh, we're closing out the week just in a fantastic way. It has been uh, a busy week, but a lovely week. Uh, this is the channel, guys. Point blank. I'm checking boxes for you. We are checking boxes together. This is probably uh, one of the most positive communities uh, on the YouTube platform. And I love it. Very gratifying. It's an honor to be with you every day. Join me for the walks, guys. This is about health, motivation, wellness. And we do it. We check the boxes. It's all wrapped up into one. So I've had some things on my mind uh, the last couple weeks. And I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump straight into straight into our content here. I uh, want to talk about why the Jeffrey Epstein case assaults your mental health. For most of us, the case is assaulting our mental health. And I want to get, <coughs> I want to go further into this. And you're going to see just there's thousands of commentators and, and, and people weighing in on this topic and very rarely on this channel you'll see there's over 500 programs uploaded on the channel uh, very rarely do I news jack <laughs> that's when a, a channel takes a, a news story and creates content around it very rarely do I news jack content but this case you know every once in a while there's a case that would come up and I feel that it's really worthy of, of some additional dialogue and the Jeffrey Epstein case uh, certainly certainly fits the bill there um, I have heard people over the last week heard a lot of things like I'm shocked it just shocks the senses I, I just I can't believe it it's it's incredible and, and what a fantastic tale. And, and I have to say, just keeping it real, um, absolutely what the man has done over the years, totally, utterly disgusting. We can check off all those boxes. But guys, are, are we really, are we really shocked? Are we really that shocked and dismayed when you think about how power, money, influence unbridled desires all comes together this is what you get this is the result of it and I, I don't think it's so much that we are we're shocked as we are stunned at the reality check we are stunned at the reality check of how easy it is how very easy it is in this world to live out the choice of one's evil. To live out the choice of one's evil. And I have to say, you know, the core of my message today is just as good is a choice, guys, evil is a choice. And to be quite honest with you, evil <laughs> and negative behaviors, it's an, easy, it's an easier choice. It's an easier choice to make. Some of you know that there was a time in my career when I was working with offenders, ex-offenders, um, a lot of people who had done just some re really bad things. And I felt like that assignment um, for a long time, I had a lot of resentment because I did not want to work with these individuals I felt it was a punishment and then as I went further into that work I understood what God was doing because if there was ever a school 
if, if there was ever something called on the job learning, I would say it was probably one of the most valuable experiences I had because in many instances, I was up close. I was, I was you know, nose to nose with really uh, pure unadulterated evil. And I have to say, um, it, it became uh, something of a university for me. And I can recall uh, getting to portions of the work and just asking the question, did you know what you were doing uh, to those children? Take, take me further into um, what happened? You know, what, what was your internal process? And I have to tell you, stunning as it sounds, Without exception, without exceptions, there are times where people could be faced with certain circumstances, life sentence in jail, or, or they just may be to the point they have nothing to lose in really sharing uh, their story in its entirety. And some of them uh, share it with a badge of honor. Without exception, each, each one of them knew exactly, not my words, theirs, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing and they went ahead and did it anyway. Do you know why? Because being good and being decent, especially in the face of urges, <laughs> desires, it requires work. It requires some level of, of work almost always there would need to be something given up or suppressed. And it is not work that these people are willing to do. I could think, you know, in this field, a psychotherapist for over 20 years, I can think of at least 30 things that this man, Jeffrey Epstein, could have done to curb his desires <laughs> that would not have involved hurting anyone but they would all take some level of work or suppression. And that is what he was not willing to do. Oftentimes the people who will come into your life to victimize you, and it may not be in terms of uh, sexual abuse, it can be other forms of abuse. That's really what these predators are. That's what they do. That has been a choice. I don't want to do the work involved in being decent. I don't want to do the work involved in suppressing uh, wants and desires. So that is what living out one's evil is. It is deciding I don't want to do the work involved in being good and decent. Being good is, is not always bag breaking. Sometimes it's easy, it's effervescent, and let's be real, sometimes it is not. That's just the reality of the lives that, that we're leading. I want to say a word to not just the victims of Jeffrey Epstein. I want to say a word to uh, the people who watch this channel and you may have been victimized at some point in your life. This is really important uh, to observe what I'm going to say. One of the other stunning realities that I discovered in my work over these last uh, few decades you need to hear this. I know it may seem harsh, but to a predator, to a predator, I want you to hear this clearly. What you become after they have violated you, what you become is a pebble. You become a pebble in a tire. It's like a Mack truck steam rolling through the desert and just a little pebble get stuck in there, barely noticeable, barely recognizable. They go on to live their lives. Um, sometimes it's behind bars. Sometimes it's on vacation and coffee shops. I want you to understand that you become the pebble in their tire. And what so many victims will do, you make these individuals your mountain or your boulder. <laughs> in the road. And I have to tell you, it was a stunning, it was a stunning day. I was sitting with a man who had committed a, a series of really horrible deeds. He could not even remember the name 
he couldn't remember the name of one of the young women he had violated. And I knew for a fact that this woman was torn up, couldn't, couldn't go to school, couldn't think, had devastated her family. And, you know, there she was at an utter loss, her life completely destroyed. And this man, you know, he couldn't even remember, couldn't even remember her name, could vaguely remember what she looked like. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? These are the realities, guys. I'm gonna tell you, a lot of people say, uh, giving the victims a lot of advice, the people who've been so, so devastated by this man, and they'll say, For, forget Jeffrey Epstein, you know, go on with your life, do what you need to do. I agree with all of that, but I look at it a little bit differently. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't forget him. I would not forget Jeffrey Epstein. I would do everything in my power to remember him and use this man the way he used you. Use him as a tremendous source of power and empowerment. Reverse the script. Let this man and the flashbacks that come along with the violation, let this man be your greatest source of inspiration to go on and have an amazing life, to raise your children, to take your vacation, to finish school, to enjoy your relationships. And I will go one further. I would get very smug about it. I would be very arrogant about it. And I would be very insistent, very insistent that this man's very presence, his very nature, the encounters with him would serve to be the greatest source of motivation for your life. Remember him on your picnics and smile very smugly. Take everything that happened. And I say to, to use it for empowerment because sometimes forgetting is impossible and it's too hard. But what we surely can flip the script, get everything you can out of it. And that's how you take back your power. I'm gonna tell you guys something else. I rarely, if ever, <laughs> make predictions. Um, I'm not psychic, uh, just deeply uh, spiritual and aware. I think this man, they'll sentence him. Um, he'll likely go to jail, but I think because he is so smug and because he is so entitled and doesn't want to do the work, it's going to involve doing time in prison. It's going to involve mental repositioning and work. And he doesn't want to do that. I think he's going to do something uh, to ensure that he, he doesn't have to rise to the occasion and be accountable even for that level of reparation and work. I could be wrong, guys. I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't think I am. <laughs> Just remember, you heard it here first. Uh, so you guys, this is uh, my message for today. Just really has to do with taking back your power taking back your power and really understanding that it's a thin line. It's a very thin line oftentimes between good and evil. All of it, every bit of it, is a conscious choice, a conscious decision that you make. Make the empowered decision, even if it involves some level of work, guys. Thanks so much. I hope you have an awesome weekend. And I will see you soon.